All right, welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to be doing the six panel baseball hat and check the description box below for patterns and all the links you need to make your hat look professional. Um, this is a fairly easy project for if you are familiar with sewing. So, yep, let's get right into it. All right, to start, you'll need to grab your pattern and if you're using the pattern that we have available in the for download in the description below, um, you're gonna wanna cut on the inside of the black line and make sure you do that because if you cut on the outside, then it's gonna throw your, the measurements of your pattern off and your hat will not turn out exactly fitting right and this happens quite a bit. So just make sure if you're using our pattern to cut on the inside of the black line and yeah, then once you get that cut out, then you can go move on to cutting your fabric out. All right, now when you have your pattern cut out, um, just go ahead and trace it on your fra fabric. This is, we're using a soft twill, and you can find this pretty much at any fabric store or hobby shop in your area. Um, yep, just go ahead and trace it, and then when it comes to this part, again, make sure you cut on the inside of the chalk line because you want this to, to turn out as precise as possible to um, shape. And then another tip too is when you are cutting it out, um, our pattern, if you're using our pattern, we show where what side to sew on to the other panels. And we're just gonna do a little dash there to remind us because once you cut them out, they look pretty, uh, all the panels look kind of the same. So um, you can just find a way that works for you to, in order to match them up. All right, now that you have your pattern cut out and you're ready to sew, you're gonna to wanna to take your back pan two panels and sew those together first along the top edge. And then when you get done with that, then you can stop and we'll move on to the next step. And if you use a industrial machine or any machine really, I would recommend doing a shorter stitch length because that will just make for a stronger hat. Um, you can do what you want though. And we are leaving a quarter inch seam allowance because that's what our pattern calls for. Um, definitely take a look at what your pattern is calling for if you're not using ours um, because that makes a huge difference when it comes to how the hat fits in the end. So. Um, we are going to cut this little axis off here, and this is not another step that you don't have to do, but we just do it because it makes for less bulk on the inside of the hat. Alright, so now we are over, over at the double needle. This has a quarter inch gauge, and this is going to help us with top stitching and getting a, that nice parallel stitch and covering up the inseam here. That's gonna be done with this folder. And you can find these, um, we'll have a link in the description on, on where to find them. And these, this is a really quick, easy way to do it. You can get a lot nicer ones than this, and I recommend if you're doing a lot of production to get a nicer one. But we just wanna show you how to do this a simple way, because you can also do this step on with a single needle sewing machine, if you have like a domestic one, you can get a twin needle. It's just going to make on the bottom stitch like a zigzag pattern and it's not going to have two separate lines. 
stitch lines. So um, I rec recommend looking into it depending on what, um, how many hats you're making and whatnot. It's a lot nicer to have a dedicated machine to this process. But anyways, um, we'll show you how this works. All right, now you're gonna take your two front panels and sew those together, and this is where we mark to sew onto the side panel, so we know that we're gonna, this is the front of the hat, so we're gonna sew that together, and remember to turn it right sides together. And also for this panel, we put on interfacing, which this is um, standard cap grade interfacing, and I highly re recommend doing this. You're probably not gonna find this stuff at your local hobby store, it's a little thicker and it, it um, adheres to your fabric really nice. Um, you can find it at capsuflyco.com or if you really look around you'll find it somewhere but this is made for hats and um, it just makes your hat look professional when in the end product. So we're going to sew this front together and we actually could have sewn this together and the back panel at the same time and then taken over and did both the strips, but we're just gonna show you it step by step here. All right, we're back at the double needle and like I said, at the last step, we could have sewn this part together and then sewn the other one and brought both of them over here and done them at the same time, but we're just showing you each step. So we're gonna do the same thing, just run it through here just to get that nice top stitch and to cover up the inside seam. All right, so now we're gonna take one of our side panels and we mark this and that's um, gonna be sewn to the back panel. So we're gonna take one of these and sew it to the front panel on, with the right sides facing each other. And just make sure you have the right side on there, or the, the right panel. And then now you're gonna to wanna to take the other panel and sew that to your back side. So we are going to want to sew that one to here. All right, now that you have these three panel sections, you, you're gonna take it, put right sides together, and sew all the way across, and that's gonna connect the rest of your hat. And the reason we did the first 
um, top stitching just on the front and the back panel because that makes for less bulk because we're going to do an X across and finish off the top stitching and it just makes for less of bulk when you're in doing that step because there's that intersection there in the middle. So, um, and it makes it easier to align everything right here too when you have the three panels going against the other three panels and you're going to want to put the right sides together and match up the middles and the ends and definitely keep an eye on it while you're sewing because you're going to want to start there right at the bottom and then keep an eye on it if you're just using a single stitch sewing machine but if you're using a walking foot you shouldn't, you shouldn't have too much of a problem And again, you can just trim off the access around that top, that whole seam. And especially in the middle, you're going to want to trim a little bit of that bulk so it makes it easier when you're running your bias tape on there, your top stitching. And then after that, you're ready to put the rest of your tape in top stitch. All right, so now we're back at the double needle. And the reason, again, why we did that is so we can run straight across in one go, and then again, straight across in one go, and that may, just makes an X and it makes it less bulky because you could essentially do sew the whole top together and top stitch straight across and then the X, but it just, that intersection gets really bulky there. So we do it this way and I mean, you can do it the other way if you want, but we find it's easiest going if you're doing production. All right, so now we are gonna just do the last top stitch across there, and it's the same as what we just did. Just gonna feel different, a little bit different because we're gonna be going from a different angle, but. All right, so now we are going to seal off the back edge of the hat, the opening. And you, there's multiple ways to do this. Um, we are going to use a double fold bias tape binder and um, we, I just like the way it looks. You can hem this, fold it, like do a serge and fold it over and just do a top stitch. Um, essentially, you're just trying to hem it and cover up that raw edge there and we'll show you how it looks with the double fold. All 
All right, so now we went ahead and surged, surged around the bottom of the hat just to seal off everything and to make sure the fabric doesn't fray. And if you don't have a serger, you can do a zigzag stitch along the bottom and that would be totally fine. And now we're going to add a size strip on the inside of the bottom. And this pattern, it calls, it will, calls for essentially like a quarter inch um, roll at the bottom there. So this kind of makes up for that. If you don't have this, you can use, I mean, another piece of fabric just to, so, so a stiffer piece of fabric just to, kind of account for it, but I highly recommend getting these. Um, they're available at capsupplyco.com, and if they're not in stock, just send them an email. I'm sure they can get you some. And it just makes your hat look a lot better in the end. It keeps a nice structure going around the whole hat, and they're really easy, just an easy step to sew in. And make sure you put it on the inside of the hat. All right, so now we are going to sew the fabric for the brim, and we are using a brim from capsupplyco.com. I highly recommend using a brim up to that quality, a standard cardboard just doesn't cut it if you're trying to make a professional looking hat. It just kind of looks like junk. But, so what you're gonna wanna do is take your brim, and I don't know what shape you're gonna have, but trace around the outside, and you have your fabrics right side together and you're going to want to cut just a little extra just to give you just to be safe and just trace it and I go all the way down to the bottom of whatever I'm cutting on and you're essentially just making a sleeve for the for the brim to go into and I found cutting pretty close to the inside of that line there will get you a nice sleeve to slide your brim into. If you go too far in, then it ends up being too tight and kind of not fitting that great. So, I mean, you can play around with it and see what works best for you based on the fabric you're using too. If you're using stretchier fabric, it might work. All right, so when you're trimming the edge here, I would give yourself about a quarter inch. All right, so once you fit your brim in there, you're gonna wanna kind of push it all the way towards the top as much as possible. And when you're sewing your visor stitch stitches, you're going to wanna just try to keep it up against the front as much as possible. And we are using a stitch guide here. And if we have this made for us, and if you are looking for one of these, just send us an email and we can, um, direct you in the right location to find one of these. I highly re recommend this because it just makes your brim look really nice and it's a lot easier to do too. So, and also we are sewing through this plastic with an industrial single stitch. You can also sew through the plastic with 
domestic machines, we have tested it with these brims. So whatever you're using, you should be able to do this part. And even if you just want it, we're gonna do three lines here, three stitches, st stitch lines, and you can stop at one. Essentially, you just wanna secure it so that the fabric is not flopping all around. So we'll show you how this stitch guide works if you're interested in, in looking for one of these. All right, so now we are going to sew along this inside part of the brim. And this is to help pull everything tight. So when you sew, you're gonna start it right on the edge there and pull really tight. And just go as close as you can. Just to get it nice and tight. And that just helps keep your fabric on there secure and pulled back, get the access fabric out of there. All right, so now that you have your crown and your brim ready to go and sew together, um, depending on what brim you get, the brims we use from Cap Supply Co. have a little notch so you can feel that notch and just put a little chalk mark in there and that indicates the middle of your brim. And you're gonna to wanna to take the middle of your crown and line that up with that middle. So, and keep it nice and square. So you're gonna to wanna to take that into your sewing machine then and you can fold this back, kind of open it up so you can see what's going on and making sure that's still aligned. And we like to sew as close to the brim as possible on the inside of the size strip. And that just makes it easier to align when you're going around. So I start in the middle just to make sure that it's centered and just do a half and then you can do the other half. Okay, so now we're gonna attach the sweatband to the inside of the cap. And we are using a post bed sewing machine here with a roller foot. And this just helps work the sweatband on, on a nice angle like that. You can totally do this on a flat bed sewing machine, single stitch. Um, we've done it. We just like using this and showing a different way and machine to use. Um, again, if you need help finding these machines, just email us. We'd love to help you out. So we'll show you how this machine works. And it's done the same way too with the flatbed. 
if you want to imagine if you're using a flatbed just you're going to imagine it to stop right there and not have the post coming out so it's done the same way And now that you have your sweatband on, you can go ahead and trim this extra off. I just leave it on there until the last part because it's easier to maneuver when you're working with putting on that sweatband. Just go as close as you can on the inside there. trim away the rest of your little threads, clean it up a little bit. And then you're ready for the next step. All right, so now the next step is to finish up the end here and put your, if you either, if you either want to do a snapback or a strapback, we are gonna do a strap back on this hat, but the snap back is really easy to do. What you're gonna wanna do is you just roll these, the sweatbands over, put them up, and then you put your snap in there, in that little pocket, and then you just tack back and forth, sew it back and forth, and same thing for the other side, and you're done with that and you have a snapback. And that essentially will make your hat, and you can test it out and see how it fits. So, but since we're doing the strap back, we are gonna show you how to do that. So first off, you're gonna wanna take the side that you're not putting the strap on and seal that off. Just roll that sweat edge over and seal that off to start. All right, so now we are going to put the strap on. And just do the same thing, fold. And you have that folded, put that in there and line it up parallel with the bottom. And just sew that. You can, you don't have to keep filming. All right, so now we are going to top stitch the front here and kind of make that look a little more neat. And we're using an edge foot press here. And just go along the edge of that brim. 
And you can start at the back. I just like doing the front. Okay, so now we're gonna attach the buckle. We already made our hole. You just wanna line your buckle up, not on the bottom edge, just essentially lined up on the other side of where you put your leather. If you are using um, the strap back, so just get your, we already made our hole, so just however you're gonna, Attach it to your cap, and then we are using a rivet. Um, I recommend using eyelets. We just are low on them right now, and we're gonna try a new method here. So that's on there, and that looks like it's secure. So then if you have oval eyelets for the strap to feed into, those are fairly easy, just pick where you want to mark. And I'm going to show you how to do it without the press. So, because the press is kind of hard to find, so I'm just going to show you how to do it without the press. So, we're looking like we want it there, so we're just going to eyeball it. And cut a slit. Line that up and take your other piece and make sure your the other piece will feed right onto there. So once you have it lined up, just there's little flaps on the inside and you just bend those over. And you can trim all that excess fabric on the inside there after you bend these flaps over. And that's essentially how you do it without a grommet press. I would recommend investing in a grommet press because it's just so much more faster. Like that took forever to even align that in both sides. So, I mean, it's up to you. You can get by doing it this way, but yeah. Okay, so now we are going to put our eyelets in here, and actually we're using vented eyelets. And you can do your vents on the top of your hat however you want. You can use just regular open eyelets, or you can use stitching. Um, get creative with it, figure out how what look you're going for, and yeah, get it, get custom. And we are gonna show you how to put vents on. So we went ahead and already marked and then we're just gonna cut the little holes for the vents to go in. And again, this is, we're just using scissors. Um, usually you can just use a, a punch, which works, it's more efficient and it's a nicer hole for you, but.
and that's essentially that. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the rest of them, but that's all you need to see for this step. And you're just gonna go around and do all of them. And it's the same for the eyelets. If you're using just regular circle eyelets, you're gonna either have a press or a punch or something so that way you can, it seals off on the night, on, in the inside there nice and will hold that in there for a long, long time for quality. All right, so now we are going to install the cap button and if you want a professional one um, go to capsupplyco.com these are a cover button and with a three prong so you're going to want to cut your circle out of fabric in place just work around it there's there's, are, there's a lot easier ways to do this if you have the right equipment um, i'm just showing you it this way and even if you want to customize Buttons are easy to change out if you want to customize buttons on your hat. So just throw that in there and then you are going to install that piece. And you just want to push it in there pretty even, evenly. And sometimes it is tricky to do. We have to trim fabric. And okay, so you have that on there. Then you want to take your cap and your prong. You want to essentially put your finger on the middle where you want to do it and then line that up then push that in. Then I like to grab a little piece of leather so that way when the prongs go through, it, they don't bend because they, they bend when they go through. So you wanna tap that through so you can see where you're lining up. And then put that back on your block. All right, so once you get those two ready to go. Your these this will fall right into place with those three. So you just want to set it on there, and you want to get the three pointing out just a little bit, three prongs, and feel around. And then when you're ready, um, I recommend grabbing coverage so you don't get your button dirty and tap that into place and it should be on there nice and secure. And what those prongs do is they go in and they push out towards the edges of the button, which will lock the fabric in place and lock that button, everything secure in there. And it also just helps secure the inside of your hat and just that whole middle section where everything meets. It just brings it all together for just a stronger, nicer looking hat. All right, so this step I highly recommend doing as well. It's gonna make the inside of your hat look a lot nicer too and really mend that uh, sweatband up on the outside. So you're gonna wanna steam it or iron it and overall this is gonna make everything kind of come together really nice. So it just... depending on what steamer you have. Let's go around that sweatband area. And get, you might as well get the whole hat too while you're at it. Seams, pretty much everything. And that's it. And we went ahead and already put our logo on there too. So you can do that at this point as well. 
and pretty much from there on you are done. All right, thanks everyone for watching. There you have it, your six panel baseball hat. And if you follow the steps correctly, you should have one that looks just like this. And other than that, thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think, if we need to add steps. We're looking at doing more videos on in-depth for each step. And stay tuned and have a look out for that. Um, be sure to follow us on our Instagram and check out our clothing on our website if you're interested in buying any of it. Um, we're always coming out with new designs. We make everything in-house here, our, our designs, we sew it here. Um, yeah, thanks again and thanks for all your support. And yeah, have a good one.